Hello everybody, it's Noah. Today I'm going to be doing a review of the Kung Brewer DC Power Supply. Um, the version I have in front of me here right now is um, in white, and I have the 30 volt 5 amp version. Um, but they do have alternatively a 30 volt 10 amp, 60 volt 5 amp, and a 120 volt 3 amp. And you can get these in black also if you prefer. Um, I just chose the white because it kind of fit the setup better. Um, but honestly, I think both look pretty good. Um, so some of the key features, the reason I chose this power supply is as a knob for adjusting the um, inputs and it has four memory um, recall buttons so you can set these to whatever voltage and current you want. And um, it, I think primarily the reason I was interested in this one is it has an on off for the output. So you can have the power supply on, but you can um, essentially turn off and on the output so that you can keep the power supply on, see what you have it at, and um, still be able to toggle that without shutting down and restarting the whole thing or disconnecting from your setup. And then um, you have this button to switch between changing the voltage or the current, and you can just toggle with the, uh, with the um, scroll wheel here to uh, change the current to a higher value or lower value, voltage to higher or lower, and then if you actually press it in, um, you can change the value um, of the next decimal place to the left and then it cycles back to the beginning on the right when you get all the way to the end and then you can also lock it so that um, you don't make any changes to the power supply um, while you're uh, I, I don't know if this feature is really that necessary to be honest but essentially you can um, keep it so that you can't change the values with the knob while this is engaged and it has three terminals here you have a uh, like permanent ground that you can ground anything you want with, and then you have the actual voltage, positive and negative, um, across the voltage you set. So five volts, then this is plus five, this is zero. And then in the back, there's not really that much else to see about the power supply, but it has that standard three prong um, cable that it comes with, and then it has a fan in the back, but it's pretty quiet. I've never heard the fan kick on. Underneath the power cable there, you also have some fuses. I didn't need to change mine out for America, so you might need to change yours if you're getting it for a different country. Um, other, than that, other than that, that's pretty much all the main features of the power supply. I'm going to turn it on and let you guys take a look at it. Um, so you have your three main uh, display uh, indexes. You have the voltage, uh, the current, and the wattage. And the these change dynamically as you're using the power supply. Um, I'm pretty sure that's a pretty standard feature. Um, as you can see, the output starts by default off, and it defaults to the, uh, I believe it defaults to the last uh, remembered uh, memory. So if I turn off the power supply, it takes a little bit for the transient to wear out. When I turn it back on, it's going to be back on that third memory uh, button. And um, you can essentially see the real time here when you scroll the knob, you can change the voltage. Uh, like I said, you can switch over to current and change that, and then it'll just cycle back to the beginning. And if you press the knob, it'll just move the decimal uh, one to the left, and it'll time out after about five seconds or so. If you want to save these, it was a little bit tricky to figure that out at first. You want to wait till it stops blinking there, and then you can press and hold the um, memory button you want to save it to. If you try to save it while it's still flashing, I think I've had issues where it just doesn't save the right values, and if you switch away from it and switch back, it will have whatever it was previously and it didn't have like the new stuff you just set it to. So you just need to remember to let it stop blinking before you press and hold to save to memory. And then, uh, like I said, you can press the on and off button. Nothing's hooked up to it right now, so it's got nothing on the voltage. Well, now it's got the, the it's got the voltage, realize there's nothing on the, the no load, so you have no current and there's no uh, power being consumed right now. Um, and then when you turn it back off, you can see uh, it just defaults back to the maximum current uh, output that you can set it to. So it actually does come with these set of leads here, which are just uh, they simple simply plug into the actual inner portion of that of the cable there. And right now I have the uh, screw portions, the screw terminal parts uh, removed because these these leads actually go over the entire post, and these go, these leads go inside of the post. So it just depends on like what kind you can get. But this kind can take this power supply can take either type and. Even if you want to like screw down a um, like a regular wire to this power supply, it also has that feature. You can use these uh, that I currently have removed. You can screw them on, and you could uh, essentially tighten down 
on the wire so that if you uh, just have like loose wires, you can attach them right to the power supply. I tend to prefer not to do that though, so I have my own leads on here that have a quick connect to a couple of different type of connectors that I use. Um, but yeah, the alligator clips that come with it are pretty cheap. Um, I honestly don't think I'd recommend uh, these, but if you, you can pick yourself up a pretty decently cheap set of leads uh, that have a lot of different types of connections, also on Amazon, uh, if you're looking for something more than just a basic uh, cheapo alligator clips. But yeah, that's not a big deal to me, honestly. So yeah, it's not really a whole lot going on with this power supply. It's a nice cheap, um, I think I got it for about 55 bucks, which is pretty nice for a single output power supply. Um, the dual output ones are pretty nice, but it's hard to find a dual output power supply that's decent under a hundred bucks. Um, and most of the time I only need a single output anyways. It would be nice to have a dual output if you want to do um, something like uh, plus five volts, minus five volts. You cannot do that on this type of power supply. You will need a dual output. Um, but if you just need a plus five volts to zero, uh, then this, this power supply can do the job no problem. And I have actually used this for a bunch of hobby projects and it, it's worked great. So I would highly recommend this power supply if you're looking for a nice cheap power supply that has memory functions, uh, toggleable on and off separate from the power of the power supply. And it has a dial for convenience. I know some of them use buttons and I don't I don't, I tend to not prefer those as much because it's easier to scroll through faster than it is to press the buttons. Um, but that's just my personal preference and it's made of metal, pretty well built. I'd give it my full recommendation. Um, so if you have any questions, you can just drop them in the comments. I can try to answer them for you. But other than that, that's pretty much the video. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.